My name is Eric. And I'm Lindsay. And we'll be talking about song learning in birds. First, we will talk about what is song learning. Song learning is a way for birds to communicate within their species. And within this, within the species, they are able to have two sounds that they incorporate into their routine. One of them is call and the other one is song. A call is a short and simple vocalization in which is associated with flight or danger and is mainly used throughout the whole year. Songs are more complex vocalization that which are phrases that are combined with syllables but the syllables are incorporated into notes. Songs are mainly used only for mating and is only sung by male birds. The discovery of song learning began by William Thorpe in 1950. His research was to study the importance of adult males teaching nestlings to sing. He isolated the chaffin birds at a nestling stage. Once the birds began to develop and grow, he saw that the net, that the shafting birds did not develop the same songs, but they developed abnormal songs from other shaft finches birds. In evolution, biologist Ernest Mayer researched the evolutionary change in song learning. He found in phylogenetic tree, every species has a similarity with the song variation. However, through time, they develop different song repertoires because they have developed a new behavior, behavior around other species. For example, gold crest and flame crest have a strong similarity in their repertoire. However, they have a slight different variation within their song abilities. Because of their different variation within their song, they are no longer able to communicate with one another, in which it is important to understand that if one if the variation changes, the birds will no longer communicate because they are no longer considered as the same species. Importance of song learning in birds is because in sexual selection, we see that females prefer males with a larger repertoire and males with larger repertoires have a higher reproductive success meaning that they would have more offsprings. This is important because we will see the difference between closed-ended learners versus open-ended learners. For example, white crown sparrows are closed-end learners, which means they have a short period of a few months after hatching when they can learn songs. And this puts them in a position to learn one song in their entire lifetime. Unlike the European starling and Serena's canaria, they are known as open-ended learners, which means they can learn and add new songs to their repertoire throughout their lives, usually on seasonal basis, which sex Sings tend to depend on who competes to breed. In many species, only males sing. In others, both males and females sing equally in duets. Furthermore, brown trashers are also open-ended learners, but the only unusual thing for them is that they have a rare ability to have 2,000 songs in their repertoire. Overall, understanding that that the amount of 
some variation could lead to a higher reproductive success. The development of the song is taught by an adult male to the young generation. They tutor the song to the fletching and they incorporate that song into their memory. Once they have created that template, they are able to practice with themselves and match the same tutor song. For example, in the diagram, it shows that a, an adult male teaches the younger one how to vocally interact throughout their dialogue in terms of their song. Once the song has been completed and practiced throughout and met the uh, variations of the song, in the once they hit adulthood, they are able to communicate with other individuals throughout the process. But if the bird is overstimulated, it can affect the learning process. Once the stimulated simulation has been done, the song is degrades over time and the song will not be performed as if it was taught. If the song is not perform, perform as it was taught, the bird will no longer be able to communicate with his same species. There are two distinctive processes in the development of species-specific songs in birds. The first process involves the encoding of the song of choice into the bird's memory, known as the sensory portion of development. This is when the sensitive phase occurs, being the first 50 days of a bird's lifespan. This time is similar to the critical period of language acquisition in humans, however, our optimal span is from three to five years of age. Cunningham and Baker studied song learning in white-crowned sparrows and found that when a 50-day-old hand-raised sparrow lacking socialization was exposed to a male song of a different species during the sensitive phase, the juvenile bird was eventually able to replicate the song. They also remarked that natal philopatry, when a bird repeatedly returns to its birth site, coincided with this time period, resulting in the learning and retention of their native song. The second process involves the reproduction of the desired song, known as the sensory motor portion of development. This requires stimuli produced by a tutor, which is necessary for the individual to hear in order to ensure the successful development of their species-specific song. Birds deafened prior to this period of time will be able to produce a song, however, it will bear little resemblance to the song of their peers. For example, the zebra finch's anterior forebrain neurons are considerably affected in terms of selectivity when the connection between the auditory and the vocal mechanisms are disturbed or diminished. This results in the production of a song, however, the song is incongruent with the specific song attempted. When considering the acquisition of songs in birds, there are two prevalent models that account for what occurs. The temporal method involves a template, which is learned from a tutor and is the basis of a song that is encoded within the bird's brain. In Thorpe's studies using chaffinches, the evidence supported the notion that young birds house an intrinsic need to sing their species' song that does not necessarily stem from other birds. This limits the kind of songs that the bird will produce since its neurons are highly selective. The tutor model involves juvenile birds learning their songs from their adult peers, which relies on instruction in order to encode the template. These processes are not always mutually exclusive, and the picture on the left demonstrates the influence of tutors on song production. As mentioned earlier, the sensory and sensory motor stages are very important to the proper development of a song within songbirds. The sensory stage is defined as the memorization of the template from a tutor, usually an older male. The sensory motor stage is defined as the translation of the template to the motor cortex. The motor cortex is where the action of song amplification will begin to occur. This primarily uh, occurs by practice and the comparison of the vocal output to the template in order to refine the resulting product. The picture on the right depicts conspecific preference in which a song that is almost identical to the template song is preferred, whether it be by a tutor or a potential ma mate. Heterospecific preference refers to songs that differ from what is expected.
In terms of how neurons can be observed and used in patterning and mapping of, a, of song production, these can be determined by neuronal in terms of how neurons can be observed and used in patterning and mapping of song production, these can be determined by neuronal discharge. When the process of song production occurs, the neurons involved can be mapped and tracked using what is classified as discharge, a byproduct of neuronal activity, which is an effective method of observation. Auditory feedback is a vital aspect of learning for all birds, which signifies an important relationship between auditory output and vocal control within the body. For example, in the white crowned sparrow, the neurons are highly selective to stimuli emitted from their tutors, which is influenced by the bird hearing its own feedback from its vocal control mechanisms. The process of imitation in the brain is referred to as a bird's song system. The vocal mechanism being the syrinx and the respiratory muscles receive efferent signals from the brain when they are expected to perform. The attempted song is then compared to its template in an effort to proofread. When an Error is found, an afferent signal is sent from the motor neurons to the brain in order to modify the commands that yielded the error. The picture on the left depicts the pathway in which imitation is carried out. In the motor pathway, the HVC sends instruction to the RA, which responds by sending axons to two motor neurons that in turn act activate the vocal system within the bird, again involving the syrinx as well as the respiratory muscles for breath. The remainder of the components involved in the photo are essential in the process of learning. For example, many studies have found that canaries are considered to be sexually dimorphic in terms of systems of songs. Systems of songs have been found to be sexually dimorphic in many species of birds. Males commonly sing more than females on average and hold an expansive repertoire or collection of songs. This is thought to be an evolutionary advantage in terms of mating as mentioned earlier. For example, many studies have found that canaries are considered sexually dimorphic in terms of systems of songs. Their HVC was found to be three times larger in the males than of their female counterparts, which is an integral component in the reproduction of song. Geographically, song production can also vary. In the building of a male's repertoire, there are two possible ways in which a song can be acquired. When instruction is prioritized, the individual is instructed by their immediate neighbors. If this is held true, then the song of birds in neighboring territories should be more similar to the songs produced than of very distant non-neighbors. When selection is favored, the male dictates which songs are acquired by interacting with other males that are not necessarily native to the area. The male in this situation can choose one or more songs to add to their repertoire and can employ them in different circumstances. The picture on the left demonstrates the migratory patterns of different birds, which will become important in the next slide. When observing two sedentary populations of birds, it was found that the songs of neighboring birds were more similar in sound than songs emulated by birds that resided in areas farther away. This suggests that learning by instruction is favored by these sedentary species. Whereas, in migratory birds, it was found that the opposite was true, and selection seemed to be of better use in the birds observed. The picture at the top right depicts the differences in vocal feedback in migratory birds, demonstrating the different options that selective birds possess. In conclusion, song learning in birds is a multifaceted and dynamic process that has served as an area of interest within research for many years. There are many songbirds that have not been mentioned and even more interesting information that follows them. The evolution of song in birds has undoubtedly been a physiologically complex but beneficial result of their evolution. We hope you enjoyed our presentation and thanks for listening.